Okay, talking about naming, uh, naming both ionic and covalent compounds, um, there is a difference, and uh, a lot of students learn first how to name ionic compounds, um, ionic, and then they learn how to name covalent, and then um, and then they do just fine with that, and then you give them one of the two, and you ask them to name it, and then they have no idea what to do. Um, so. So understand that there is a difference between the two and know what the difference is. Um, an ionic compound is made up of a metal and a non-metal, and in, in a covalent compound is made up of a non-metal and a non-metal. Okay, so that is your identifier. So step one is to identify what it's made up of. Uh, maybe I should move that up to so step one. Um, determine what, what type of compound it is, because it's not always going to tell you. Once you get to your midterm or your final, it might not tell you. Um, you know, it, it might say name the compound. It's not going to say name the ionic compound. It's just going to say name the compound. Uh, so you might need to know, uh, is this an ionic compound or a covalent compound? And you know that by what it's made up of. Um, so. So take a look at what it's made up of. Uh, let's use our example of NaCl, and let's use, um, we'll just make one up, let's do SF6. Okay, so we have, um, we have an ionic compound here because we have sodium and chlorine. Okay, so we have, uh, we have sodium is our metal, and then our non-metal is chlorine. In our case over here, we have sulfur and uh, fluorine, so those are two non-metals. So that's a covalent compound. Okay, uh, the rules for naming are different. Um, so let's start with uh, let's start with the harder of the two um, ionic compounds. Naming ionic compounds is a, it's a little bit trickier than naming covalent compounds. Naming covalent compounds is pretty simple. But um, okay, so starting with ionic compounds, number one. Um, we, we know about cations and anions. Uh, cations hold a positive charge, anions are negative. Cations, if you're going to name a cation, you just state what it is and uh, you put ion after it. Okay, uh, let me give you some examples. Um, in the case of sodium, if we were just going to name sodium, we would just say it's the sodium ion. If we were going to say potassium, we would say it's the potassium ion. Calcium, calcium ion. Uh, hydrogen, hydrogen ion. Okay, um, if it's if we have an an anion um, with with the with the negative charge there, um, in the case of of chlor chlorine here, um, it gets eyed, gets the ending eyed at the end, and um, so in this case we would have we would have uh, sodium chloride okay so this would be let me get a different color here this would be sodium chloride okay uh, one thing I wanted to mention here um, the the difference between ionic and covalent compounds an ionic compound is giving you a proportion it's telling you that uh, proportionately it's giving you a ratio yeah, that's a good way to explain it. It's telling you this is a ratio between uh, the sodium and the chlorine atoms. Here is your ratio. In this case, the ratio is equal. Uh, they're the same. Uh, comparing the sodium and the chlorine atoms, they're the, it's the same amount. Um, looking at a covalent compound, it's telling you the exact amount of atoms. Okay, so in this case, it would say um, for every sulfur atom, there's six fluorine atoms. Um, so that's that's the difference between the two, and that's why the naming's different for these. Maybe, maybe I should draw a line between these. Let's go like this. Okay. Okay. So uh, naming naming for our example here, sodium chloride was pretty easy, but um, unfortunately, it gets gets a little little more complex than that. Um, gets a gets a little confusing when we get into our transition metals. Um, it gets it gets tricky when we get into any metals, any metals with. Well, I'm getting kind of sloppy here. Okay, any metals with more than one charge. Okay, 
Now, uh, it, it should say in your book what metals carry more than one charge. Um, I can tell you what the common metals are that carry more than one charge. Um, like I said, your book will probably tell you what they are. Um, as, as you work with examples, um, you'll just become familiar with what they are. But um, let me give you an example. Uh, iron, iron's a good example. Fe plus two. Fe plus three. Okay. Iron carries two different charges. It can be a plus two or a plus three. Uh, by the way, just a just a side note. Um, Fe plus two is absorbed much better in the body than uh, iron. Iron three is. That's why you see iron. Iron two sulfate instead of iron three. Um, but anyway, not the point. Okay, um, so so we have iron two and iron three. Um, in a case like this, you need to uh, any metal with more than one charge. You need to need then you need to specify the charge. Seems pretty simple, right? Okay. So what we would do in a case like this? Um, Maybe we should, maybe we should use an example. So let's say we had, I don't know, um, say we had FeCl2. Let's say, okay. Um, so what we would have, and if you're if you're ever confused um, with with where with what your charges are here, um, just just break it down and start from the beginning again. Okay, um, you know what your charges for for chlorine, okay? Um, so that's where you can start, or that's where I would start at least. Um, kind of running out of room here, but that's okay. Okay, so Cl negative, and then Fe, and then you'd have to figure this out. Okay, so we crossed our charge, okay? So we got nothing over here, but then we have a two, so we must have had plus two over here. Right, because we have a two down here, so uh, Fe plus two is what we must have started with. So um, that tells us that uh, we had iron, iron two, and then remember uh, this formed a a negative negative charge. So this tells us, remember, this was an anion, um, so that we get the ending ide here. Okay, so iron two chloride. Um, now maybe I wasn't clear here with this, um, but um, the the two I think pretty obvious here. But uh, iron has a plus two charge, so it would be two. If it had a plus three charge, it would be three. Now uh, there is an older convention to the naming. There's an O U S and an I C, where the where the O U S would be the the Oh, I can't think which one's which now. Well, tell you what, this is your homework then. Um, geez, why can't I think of this? Um, one is a larger one and one's a smaller one. Um, I think uh, the ick is the larger. And this is the smaller. Fairly certain on that. Um, double check that. Should it should say in your book? I don't have a book in front of me. Hmm. I can't think which one switch now. Well, um, yeah. I encourage you to to double check that though. But uh, anyway, it's O U S and I C, and then it would use it would use the the Latin version of the name. So in the in the case of iron, it would be like ferrous, R R O U S, and ferric. Okay, so like ferrous would be the smaller one and ferric would be the larger. So ferrous would be the plus two and ferric would be the plus three. Um, I could have that flip flop, but I don't. I don't think I do. I might though. Okay, but anyway, um, so that that is the naming. Um, let me just run through what the what the what the common ones are here um, that that do carry that do carry different charges like that. Um, well, I had a list here of, of what they were, but I lost it. <laughs> Go figure. Okay, well, tell you what. I'll tell you what I remember. Okay, 
Uh, most of these I know anyway. Uh, iron, iron of course, plus two, plus three. Chromium uh, is a plus two, plus two, plus three. Um, uh, okay, lead is a plus two, plus four. Um, let's see what else. What else would be in there? Oh, uh, there is one with with mercury that I wanted to point out. Um, okay, so if we have, well, kind of running out of room here now, but um, HG two two plus and HG two. Okay, this is your mercury one. This is your Mercury 2. Mercury 1 is two atoms of Mercury with the 2 plus charge. Mercury 2 is just uh, one atom of Mercury with the 2 plus charge. Okay. Chromium, I think I said 2 plus and a 3 plus. Copper has a plus 1 and plus 2. Iron we talked about. Mercury we talked about. Tin has a plus 2. The 2 plus and a 4 plus. Um, lead has a 2 plus, 4 plus. Okay, zinc is only a 2 plus. Silver is a 2 plus. Yeah, it's as many as I can remember. Like I said, uh, you know, check your book. Um, you, you, you just become familiar with the ones that, uh, that um, have more than one charge. Uh, it, you know, if, if you wrote it out on a test and, um, and you specified one that uh, doesn't, that only has one charge, charge and you specified um specified the that like you wrote it wrote it out like we did for iron but let's say iron only had one charge and you wrote it out that way technically your your teacher should not mark that wrong um i i'm willing to bet there's many teachers out there who will mark that wrong but they really shouldn't um i mean it, there's really nothing wrong about it but you know okay i think that covers as much as the ionic naming conventions is we need to go into go into covalent life gets easier now okay um with covalent uh it's real simple uh really all you need to do is memorize some stuff if we go one two three four five well it's supposed to be a four um five yeah, i was gonna go up to ten but let's just go to four okay so mono mono die Try tetra penta, and then I'll tell you up to ten. Hexa is six, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, ten is deca. Okay, um, most teachers have you learn up until ten. Um, some teachers have you go to twenty. Some teachers have you only learn to five, so uh, just see what your teacher wants you to learn up until. And um, and these are just prefixes, and uh, these are real simple to do in the case of, um, of what we have here, is we just have, let me get a different color, um, let's get a nice purple. Okay, so we have sulfur, and then we use our prefix, um, well I don't have it written out here, but uh, like I said, Six is hexa, and this does form an anion, okay? So it'd be hexa fluoride. Okay, hexa fluoride. So if we were, if we didn't have this, and we were starting here, we would write sulfur, I'd write my fluoride, um, I'd see that I have hexa, so that would go after my, my F, so I'd have SF6. Um, and we could do more examples, but they're all they're all very simple. Um, writing covalent or naming covalent compounds is real, real simple. Um, okay, so I think that's that's everything I have for you. Um, hopefully that does clear up some of the questions between uh, naming ionic and covalent compounds.